<clears throat> Hello and welcome back to the Machine Learning at Microsoft YouTube channel. Today is a very special episode because I'm here from sunny Turin in beautiful Italy. I'm here with Delta Tray. Delta Tray is one of our top partners and they specialize in the, um, the sports broadcasting industry. I'm also here with some of our very, very best machine learning experts from all over Europe. We've all converged on Turin for this, uh, for this momentous occasion and we've been focusing on applying deep learning to um, identifying events in football matches. That's right, we've built a model that can predict when football players take a shot on the goal um, in a football match and we'll talk to you all about the gory details of how we've achieved that today. Looking forward to it. This was one of the most exciting machine learning projects that I've ever worked on. Yeah. And for me, this is my vision of what machine learning could and should be. Um, I see it as a way for us to empower our customers to create new products and services which are built on data. So we're helping them unlock the power of their data using artificial right. intelligence. There are a couple of reasons why it was so good. First off, they had a good crew at Delta Tree that we worked with, yeah. very good crew. But we also had a lot of data, which was crucial for this. Exactly, because you know, deep learning has this generalization problem. And in order for deep learning to work well, you need to have large amounts of annotated data. Yeah. So and large this... amounts of data allowed us to do an end-to-end -end solution, actually, instead of doing more feature extraction. We were founded in 1986 uh, here in Turin. And since then, I've been working basically with the greatest uh, football associations around the world. Uh, we have... Uh, sort of one-stop shop concept uh, in, uh, in our industry, which is something that is really, really um, rare. We tend to provide uh, all different kinds of services, starting from uh, um, data gathering services to broadcast services concerning TV graphics. And uh, since the latest few years, uh, we've been focusing mainly on uh, online uh, and uh, content management systems and OTT platforms. We have had quite a few event detection projects using deep learning now and what we needed to do was get some of our best ML expertise from the four corners of Europe uh, actually. So we have uh, Meteor and Jana and Tess and Klaus and uh, these are, these are the, the people that I reach out to when we have the most sophisticated deep learning projects. And what we've done now is we've kind of fleshed out an approach previously to doing event detection and deep learning. And the rough approach is we take the video stream and we segment it into overlapping five second chunks. And then we do a whole bunch of feature uh, extraction on those chunks. And then we feed them into a composite deep learning model. Now there's a bit of a kind of continuum in deep learning because the promise of deep learning is that you can learn features as part of the training process and you don't even need to be a domain expert. You can just have a purely data-driven approach. Of course, being cynical and being experienced, I know that that's rarely the case. Quite often we need to have a domain-specific approach as well. So we kind of hedged our bets a little bit on this, on this project. Um, so some of the generic features we used were VGG embeddings and that was where for every single frame in the video we outputted a VGG embedding and then we created a 2D CNN model from that. But we also did lots of other interesting models. So we did, for example, um, pose detection and object detection, and also some domain specific things like ball detection and net detection. And we also figured out that things like scene detection were important as well. This week we tried to understand uh, if it's possible to detect a shot from a video, from a soccer match video. 
And the idea is to, to be able to detect where a shot happens on, and uh, try to figure out uh, as much as possible with the high accuracy uh, if the, the ball's near the, the, the goal area and it's currently a shot inside the, the net. I'm a principal software engineer in uh, commercial software engineering and uh, I sit in the media and communication industry. So basically in commercial software engineering we have dedicated people that uh, try and w work with our top customers and top partners and they really try and understand and get deep into what are their, their problems and the scenarios that they're trying to solve. So that way we're able to have early discussions with them, talk about uh, some even to the point of uh, doing some software architecture when it's a software project or when it's a machine learning project like it was in this case, we're really able to scope down the and, and nail down the problems that we're trying to solve and figure out when uh, we need to involve data scientists in or it's, uh, it's just still a software engineering problem that we can solve with uh, high level services. We have lots of conversation that uh, make us understand what is important to the industry and what are the problems that they're facing. And that's really helpful because uh, then you can translate uh, the domain problem into the technical problem and you can really figure out what is needed from the technical side to, uh, to solve the domain problem in the best possible way. The Microsoft AI platform is vast. We have a, a swathe of services for doing machine learning at all different levels, depending on if you want to do visual drag and drop machine learning, or if you want to use pre-built models or do code first models. And cognitive services, uh, we have about 30 services for doing things like language processing and computer vision and face recognition and knowledge management. As I understand, Delta Trade have already been leveraging those cognitive services for, for quite a few things. Yes, yeah, so there are a lot of scenarios that uh, because of we use these uh, services so like, for example, the speech recognition, uh, the text uh, analysis, uh, the video indexing. Hello, uh, so our team has become kind of uh, specializing in uh, different projects concerning video processing, and this is one of them. Uh, so we developed kind of methodology for this, uh, which goes the following. Uh, we have the uh, video, which is represented as a sequence of frames, and we divide everything into five seconds intervals, and uh, basically we have uh, positive and negative samples in the form of those five seconds video intervals. And then when we want to do the score, we take the big video, we chunk it into five seconds again. Uh, well, actually, we do the sliding window of uh, five seconds over it, and we score it. So uh, to do this, each five-second interval is a sequence of frames, which is something like 126, 125 uh, uh, frames, and we need to convert it into something which can we, we can put into the neural network model. And we want uh, as much as possible to somehow featureize it, not put the row frames, because row frames uh, requires for a neural network a lot of work to pick up the relevant features. Uh, we want to produce some kind of meaningful features. So one of the approach would be to uh, create uh, uh, VGG embeddings from each frame, uh, which results in the picture like this. We have. Uh, the matrix uh, of 126 uh, rows, and each row contains the flattened VGG embedding of a frame. So suppose we have some features present, like uh, a ball or uh, some like parts, shapes, and those features would be present here in the form of those kind of vertical lines, because they are present across several frames. Um, and uh, different clip produces a quite different picture in this VGG embedding space, so we believe it's possible to classify um, clips based on this picture using a two-dimensional CNN. So we have the uh, CNN trying to pick up features from this VGG embedding representation. Uh, another way uh, would be to uh, try and produce some even more clever features. For example, we can run object detection uh, on video and we can uh, have the coordinates of the different boxes with the players. And somehow we can uh, derive uh, high level features from it. For example, whether it's a close up shot or a distant shot, whether there are groups of players in certain areas of the frame, and somehow encode it. And uh, so this can be like encoded in some kind of uh, clever vector, which can be put into the model. Uh, we can also take into account uh, sound features, because we have sound, and during the goal in uh, football, typically what happens is that people are screaming, something like, oh, which means that there was no goal. Um, and taking these sound features into account, uh, we can featureize audio, 
and there is a wonderful uh, Python library doing that. Basically, you give it audio and it gives you 34 different features. So we can have vectors of uh, those kind of uh, audio features as well. Uh, so what do we do with those vectors? Uh, we can build uh, separate models on them. So for example, we can build the model just based on the VGG. And in fact, we did. And this model, uh, in our case, achieved something like 90% accuracy, which was really surprising because we didn't expect it to work. In the beginning, we thought uh, that shooting uh, like on the goal, uh, to, to determine it, we probably would need some kind of very precise tracking of ball and uh, the gate and so on. Um, in fact, we had high accuracy. We still need to figure a little bit why that happened. But um, looking at the final video, uh, what we noticed is that the model picks up the situation when uh, there are a lot of players around the goal, around the uh, net, and there is a certain kind of configuration on the field which suggests that the goal might happen. And actually, I suggest you have a look at this video and uh, see it for yourself. Um, however, uh, we believe that it's possible to achieve even higher level accuracy if you combine all those models together. So in order to do that, what you need to do, you need to create some kind of joint neural network model, like have uh, those features go into different uh, first level like CNN encoders and then in combine them together with one classifier and produce one output, yes or no. Um, to do this technically, uh, it requires us to operate uh, on a very complex uh, Python processing pipelines because starting with the video, we need to compute those features and then feed them together. And to do that, we use uh, the library which we have developed, uh, which is called mpipel. Uh, mpipel. So whenever you have some complex project in Python which requires data processing, you know what to do. You pip install mpipel. Um, and you can watch, actually, we have the sep uh, sever separate video a tutorial on this. So if you learn how to use mpipel, you save yourself a lot of time. Uh, we've been able to achieve great results with these projects in less than one week. So I'm here with Jana and we're going to talk about the visual features um, that we're extracting. This yes. is a frame of uh, the video, basically you can think of it as a football uh, field with a few players. Imagine that there are players, I'm not <laughs> sure if it's really similar to players, but just imagine it. So first of all we needed to have something which is able to detect the players. In this case we used, we used implementation of Keras of RetinaNet and uh, it was able to detect like bounding boxes around the players. We used pre-trained pre retina net. Sorry, the marker is not really good. Yes. And now we had like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> we had lots of boxes around the players and the accuracy was pretty high. But uh, bounding boxes in themselves are pretty hard to train on. Yeah, because it's they not don't like do... something statistically exactly. significant. So uh, we basically had two trains of thought on this. Uh, first was basically to figure out the, the speed and the direction of the players, because that's important to figure out yeah. if they were doing a shot on goal or not. Yeah, for this, uh, for this case, we just used optical flow algorithm from OpenCV. Imagine that we have a player. It's like the current frame. And imagine that the player was something somewhere here on the previous one. And we just calculated like the movement of the player. And based on these features, we can have the speed of the player and the direction of the movement. And uh, this information is really significant if we talk about like a uh, team game. And uh, apart from this, we also had a thought that um, basically players congregating together would be a really important thing. Like you can imagine that when you have a shot on goal, a lot of players will be in the goal area. Uh, and that together with some other features like where the goal is and a couple of things um, make this a quite important feature, we think. So the idea here is to divide sort of the field up into different sections and then figure out the center point of each player. Of each bounding box. Yeah, of each bounding box. And, and then say, okay, so in this one we had two players, in this one, let's say the center point is here, 
we have one player, and in this one we have one player. So this would be one thing to figure out like how much they yeah, are but together. But we need spatial information as well. Yeah, because um, basically we wanted to also figure out if it was a close-up shot or if it was a long field goal. So one thing we did then was to figure out the width of the bounding boxes and have another row of information um, that has the average size of the um, of the bounding boxes in that place because for example for this one we can then say that the size is very wide and, and it has to be up. yeah and of course this is something that the deep neural network will learn yeah and the, this way we get like something like heat maps for each frame Exactly, so it would be like 002, 001, 001. Some, something that is yes. like more digestible to the uh, And of neural course, this represent, it's this representation of information is just like more understandable, and we really uh, understand what does it mean. And then you can think of it as in you put all these together in a staff like this, sort of like the VGD features, and what we kind of imagine will happen is you have a lot of things like this. And then, as the frames move, they kind of might move like this and indicate movement as well. Yeah, and for this kind of data, we can just put it into two channels. Like, let it be for this number of players and the average, uh, average size of bounding box. And use, for example, convolution, like for the images. Exactly. So we're hoping that's going to give uh, good information. But one thing that's kind of exciting about this project is that we have a lot of data for this project. So uh, as opposed to other projects where we kind of have to do a lot of feature engineering like this, in this project it seems like we don't have to do that much feature engineering because the basic um, general like VGG features actually capture quite a lot of the information that we need. We have a pipeline and the pipeline really processes uh, samples of images. So what we have is, um, or samples of videos, rather. So this, we have these five uh, second clips, right, that um, give you, uh, basically the, the entire match is um, just structured into these five second clips. And each of these five second clips has um, some, well, you know, they're just split randomly and what happens usually is uh, when something happens in a football match is they zoom in or uh, the, the perspective changes, things like that, right? Uh, so it's not really a, a coherent camera perspective that always moves around in the, in the same thing. We need to split up the different uh, the, the five second p uh, chunks into individual frames. Um, like if you have uh, a video. So we have five seconds um, of this, and but these are effectively individual frames. You, so you can think about it as individual, like yeah, images, like a, cheap, a JPEG if you want. Um, and we have to look at each of those, uh, each of these frames, and figure out what is the difference between, uh, like, if this was frame A and this is frame B. We have to uh, check if they're somewhat equal. And um, in that case, uh, this is sort of how we detect uh, scene changes. Uh, we used a Python library called uh, Scene Detect, obviously, and what this library does is it transforms uh, essentially each of these frames into a different color space. Um, so, assuming um, so, this was a regular JPEG image would be in an RGB uh, color space, but what we uh, what is easier makes it easier to um, distinguish different things uh, or different color values uh, in an image is uh, an HSV color space. So uh, you transform uh, each frame into this HSV color space and then uh, pick uh, either a few random pixels or if you want to do it like really thoroughly you tick the entire image uh, and produce a delta between those two. So uh, just a regular difference. And then um, if, these, uh, if this delta is above a certain value, some kind of cutoff, um, then you say it's a, it's a scene cut. So yeah, we throw out all the scene changes, like, and um, 
as a, a wholesale and then we get a basically we hope to get a better um, more uh, uh, to get a deeper understanding using the model of the match. And has it been working with Microsoft this week? It has been seriously amazing, really amazing. I have rarely seen such a dynamic attitude and enthusiasm in uh, in what uh, in what you do, in what we do, because in the end we we may consider ourselves uh, sort of colleagues, meaning that we in the end uh, do something that's uh, pretty similar. Obviously the two companies are a bit different, sadly for us, but uh, we can, uh, no really, it's been, uh, it's been seriously amazing, uh, great honor for us to, to, to get to work with you, and hopefully it's something that we will be able to do in the near future. We couldn't find a better partner than you, and this few days we've had to get, got to work together have been the proof of uh, what we already basically knew. Uh, we uh, work together with uh, amazing things uh, and we are able to, to do amazing things. Uh, I'm so excited and uh, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to, do, uh, to deliver uh, our services. It's been the end of an incredibly productive week. Awesome working with Delta Trade. And awesome working with Microsoft. An amazing ex dynamic experience. We are very positive about, about the next steps. I can't wait to have the chance to work together with Microsoft again. I will learn a lot about the data science approach this week. I managed to get Retina networking on Windows. And we managed to get 90% accuracy, can you imagine that? So remember to like, comment and subscribe. And pip, pip install and pipe <laughs> <laughs>